Good morning everyone. Welcome to painting number 18 of the Create 30 Challenge promoted by Elaine Picard. This is the number 12 video that will be posted on YouTube. Um, I'm painting an oil painting on a 9x12 panel. Um, I've painted on this panel before and um, instead of throwing it away I thought I'd repaint it. It's oil on oil so it should be okay. Um, the age of permanence I think is kind of long gone so if this ever becomes a masterpiece it'll probably be hopefully <laughs> replicated on t-shirts and carry-all bags plates and coffee cups and napkins don't think that'll happen but you never know so this is a recycled painting um, my name is Cliff Austin again, and so if you have a chance, please visit Curtis Art Center at www Greenwood Village um, for upcoming workshops and classes. Also, please take a look at Mary Williams Fine Arts in Boulder. And if you like this work, please take a look at CliffAustin.com. If you like and have the time, please leave comments on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. And yesterday I did a nice rose painting, and I was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it was a lot of fun to do, so I thought today I'd go back to something that is more comfortable, uh, something I'm more familiar with, something I enjoy doing a lot. Nature is always an infinite inspiration. So we're going to do a thirds on the panel here. I've already done the thirds on the photograph. This picture was taken, um, I believe, at Bear Creek. No, Bear Creek? At um, Lair of the Bear. Really beautiful spot. So all I'm going to do is just do a quick little outline to get some proportions and some uh, ideas of where pieces and parts are going to go. Try to keep some of these proportions in in check so that they don't get out of hand. I like to keep things fairly proportional. idea of where things are going to go. And so I know that this is going to be dark. All oh, this is going to be dark. So let's start with that. Just a rough outline. So I'm going to mix up my darks. Some ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Just going to put in some basic dark shapes. Just try and get our shape, value, temperature, parts and pieces in here so that we have an idea of where all these shapes are going to fall together. A good painting is just a combination of good shapes, interesting shapes. Let's try not to be boring. Once we have our shapes uh, massed in, we have an idea where all these pieces and parts are going to go. And we can evaluate and try and find out if they work together and become interesting. Hopefully they'll become interesting. Sometimes not. 
If it's not interesting, then you have to change the shapes. Most paintings have difficulties when they're not um, proportioned well, drawn well, or if their colors and temperatures are not speaking to each other. Paintings like to be relational. Does that make sense? So the relationship of this dark and that dark has to make sense. One of the last things you look for is the mark making. One of the controversies and discussions we had in art school years ago was, is a painting interesting because of the story it told? Or could it be that it's interesting because of the way it's painted. I kind of fall into the argument that it needs to be both. It needs to be both a good story. It needs to be well painted. I had an art instructor said a good painting is a marriage between concept and materials. And I kind of hold on to that. I think that's a good idea. A marriage between concept and materials. So those are our dark shapes. Just getting started. I might just tweak those dark shapes a little bit. Just for grins and giggles, because I like color. I'm just going to put some exaggerated color in spots here. Hmm, I like that. What if I do that? And then we put some purple in there. I like purple. Not purple purple, but bluish purple. Something like that. Just for fun. Ooh, and how about a little bit of pure blue? So this is blue and white. A little bit of that right in there. Yeah, maybe a little bit in there. We'll see. Maybe that'll work, maybe not. The next value shape I'm going to go after is that really warm, warm orange. And that's this stuff here. And it looks like it's this color. Cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. Might be a little too intense. I'm going to bring that down with a little yellow ochre. Make it look a little bit more natural, but a little bit brighter, higher in value. So I'm going to start with this color, and we're going to see if maybe, if it's too much, then I can always bring it back, right? But I want to see what that shape does against the rest of what's going on here. Maybe, just 
just a little bit lighter in spots. Just to give it some variety. I've noticed that things that have three values, a dark, medium, and light, are more attractive. So even if I have a circle, a sphere, it may say sphere by its nature of shape and edges, but if it has three values on it, it really becomes more believable. So three values. Top tip, put three values in everything. Telephone lines, telephone poles, birds, bees, whatever. Now this would have to be a lot lighter because it's on the ground. That looks interesting. Maybe we put a little bit of darkness in here, just some shadow feeling sense. Look right in there, maybe. Yeah, let's not overwork that. We'll leave that there for now. And then we have this purplish, gray purplish thing over here on the back side. And because it's in the back, I want it to be more gray purple than purple. I want it to be a color that really sets its place in the picture plane, which is further back. So it's got to be gray. Let's see if that color works. Ooh, that looks like it fit right in there. Just for fun. Fun, fun, fun. But I was looking at this over here, and it's got that. It looks like it needs to be a little bit lighter. About like that. That's kind of fun. That's kind of, I don't know. Could be better. Maybe if I added some orange purple. Have you ever done that? Red purples, green purples, blue purples. And then orange purples. Just trying to warm it up a little bit here. That's all. Just get some warmth in there. And this is a highly textured panel, so I'm getting a lot of surprises, some unknown things going on in there. So I got this yellow orange and I mixed a little bit of purple into it to get that kind of flesh color, but I want something really, really light right over there. Something that's got some sparkly Something like that. And then I can always make some interesting marks in there. Then it gets really dark on the bottom side of it where the light doesn't shine. So I'm going to punch that back in right in there. Something like that. And I'll go back in and make those um, shadow colors. Why don't I do that now? Well, I got the time. So I'm mixing up some ultramarine blue and some white. And let's see if that's the right color. Does that look right? Kind of looks like it works. How about a little bit in there? That's kind of cool. And it's like that. Maybe a little bit over here so it's not so lonely. That's fun. A little bit over here. Some in here. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I'll leave that for now. And it looks like I need to jump into this 
snow. So I'm going to grab a big chunk of titanium and it's a healthy spoonful of liquid to get my white not so thick but also some quick drying liquid in there that helps it dry a lot faster. So I can't give you a proportion as to how much liquid to white but I can tell you from experience that I use a little bit more liquid in the whites and the blues than I do in the earth colors. In fact some of the earth colors I hardly use any liquid, just a tiny tiny bit. But with the whites and the blues I want them um, to dry faster so I'll use a little bit more liquid. And I'm pretty sure that the way I mix this, the white is going to dry to touch within 24 hours. And it'll be dry and ready for varnish probably in about 48 hours, depending. There we go. I love that texture. That is so fun. So if you can see, the back of that is really loaded. And I'm just going to lay that in there. Just like that. Just trowel it on there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this is so much fun. And it's starting to come together. I think it's looking pretty cool. Cool, cool. So all we've got to do now is just step back and take a look if everything's working. If everything is working together. And if it is, just add some few little sparkle points. Just a little bit of fun information. What is that? Let's just do that. There we go. Fun, fun, fun. The only way this could be more fun is if I'm actually standing out on location. Plein air is amazing. Even in the wind and the bugs and the sun and the cold, being outside is a gas. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we've got a